In this video, we're going to talk about atomic and molecular spectra. Now, when I first introduced this course, I noted that it's going to be a focus on quantum mechanics and spectroscopy, right? Now, uh, spectroscopy is the second piece of this. And now that we've talked about quantum mechanics and some of its historical underpinnings, one of its major uh, tenets is this quantization of energy. And there's actually no greater experimental evidence for the quantization of energy than spectroscopy, right? So spectroscopy, like I mentioned in the uh, first video, is just the uh, study of the spectrum that's produced when light interacts with matter. You know, now we've looked at a few uh, processes where light and matter interact, right? The photoelectric effect, Davidson-Germer experiment, right? But with spectroscopy, you're looking at the spectrum that's produced when light interacts with matter. All right, so let's, for example, let's look at um, the emission spectra for a few atoms, right? So basically what you're looking at is the spectrum that's produced when you shine light on particular atomic uh, gas samples. And this is the, these are the colors that are produced from uh, interaction with that atomic sample. And you can see that you don't get a continuous distribution of light. You get discrete bands at very specific uh, wavelengths, right? So the x-axis here is wavelength and it's different for every atom, right? So what this gives us is a way to use the spectrum of an atom to identify it. It gives each atom its own spectral footprint, right? So if you see this spectrum, you know that that's hydrogen it's related to its electronic structure. This is the spectrum of helium. Same for mercury down here, right? They each have a different spectral footprint um, for what their uh, emission spectrum will look like, right? So how does this tie to the quantization of energy? Well, let's think of energy, right? And let's say that, you know, so this is like a y-axis, energy increasing going up. And each of these atoms, any uh, species, any quantum system is going to have uh, different energy levels, discrete energy levels, right? So I'll label these as such. So we'll have E3 here. We'll have E2 here. I'll make these lines a little bit longer. And E1 down here. Right, so what happens when you excite uh, an electron, right? So let's say that there's an electron here, right, in E1. And when it's in a higher excited state, it's going to relax back down to a lower level, right? And when it relaxes back down, it's what's going to happen is it's going to release a photon, right? So if we have an electron relaxing from E3 down to E2, that's going to release a photon right, of energy H nu. And that energy is going to be equal to the gap between those energy levels. So E3 minus E2, right? So by knowing what wavelength of light is, it is um, emitted from that, from that atom, you know what's the energy gap between those two energy levels. Right, same thing for, let's say we have um, a re relaxation from E3 down to E1, right? So this is gonna be a higher energy um, relaxation, right? Since there's a bigger gap between E3 and E1. So you're gonna get a higher energy uh, photon. So that means it's gonna have a greater frequency. So I'm gonna draw this one with a greater frequency, right? But it will still be, you know, H nu just with a greater frequency. And it will be equal to E3 minus E1, right? So every single atom would have its own electronic structure, right? And using this type of spectroscopy, you can figure out what that electronic structure is, right? Um, and so this is really the greatest evidence, like I said, that we have of the quantization of energy, because if energy was not quantized, then all of these atoms would produce a continuous spectrum of light, right? Uh, maybe they might defer, but it would be continuous. But we see these discrete bands, and so we know that energy has to be quantized in some way, 
right? Now, I want to show you what a molecular spectrum would look like, right? So this is specifically an infrared spectrum, right? So this is shining infrared radiation on a molecule. The molecule we're looking at is vanillin. Uh, this is actually the uh, primary extract of vanilla bean. And uh, basically what you're looking at here, I know right now it looks like a bunch of squiggles, but it has the exact same concept, right? If you think back to our video of electromagnetic radiation, when you shine infrared radiation on a sample, you're causing vi molecular vibrations, right? So what you're looking at, this is going to be a simplification, but what you're looking at is the uh, transition between different vibrational energy levels, right? So let's say we have some vibrational energy level E2 and E1, right? There's going to be some transition right, between E1 and E2. The light that was necessary to excite from E1 to E2 is going to show up as one of these bands on the spectrum, right? One of these features in the spectrum, right? But you'll notice that it's not continuous, right? This, um, there's plenty of points of zero transmittance throughout this spectrum. You're looking at discrete transitions, right? So that's the whole game of spectroscopy. It's trying to look at a spectrum like this and point out a feature like say, huh, I see this, this feature here, you know, at uh, 3,500 wave numbers, right? I'm, I'm looking at this feature. This looks interesting. Can I attribute that to some sort of transition from one vibrational state to another? What, what vibrational state does that correspond to? And in this case, that would tell you something about the bonding and the structure in the molecule, just like in the atomic spectrum, it would tell you about the energy levels of the electrons, right? So that's the whole game of spectroscopy. Can I point out some feature and can I relate it to some sort of transition uh, between discrete energy levels, in this case, vibrational energy levels, right? So that's just a quick introduction to atomic and molecular spectroscopy. We're going to be coming back to spectroscopy throughout this class. When we introduce a new model, it will give us some sort of, you know, basis for analyzing some type of spectrum. So we might like when we look at the harmonic oscillator model, it is a model of vibrations. And so we'll see how we can use that to interpret vibrational spectra and the same thing with other models. We'll keep relating this back to spectroscopy whenever we can.